Hi guys. It has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous afternoon here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we are halfway through the month of March, survived the stormy Ides of March. So it is now Wednesday, <coughs> March 16th, 2022. And uh, so Wednesday is when I like to check in with uh, our fellow collapsitarians over there at oilprice.com. And so uh, I'm not going to look at what obviously the vast majority of the stories are about the roller coaster uh, <laughs> that oil prices have been in in the past week. Good Lord, although you can, you can guarantee that the prices at the pump that went flying up last week when oil went like this are not going to come back down now that oil went back down to where it was before the prices at the pump went up. Uh, this is a no-brainer. But anyway, enough about all of that. What I want to talk about is uh, <clears throat> if you heard my... Uh, video I cut last night about that new essay from Chris Hedges that came out yesterday. If you did not listen to that, uh, go over there and check out Chris Hedges' analysis of what's going on over there in Ukraine, which I think is the most spot-on analysis if you're really trying to understand what's going on over there. But anyway, in the middle of that essay, Chris brought up uh, this same old saw, as uh, I'm beginning to call it, that I have been hearing since at least 2008. I came down in this rabbit hole in 2008 and heard uh, everyone from Chris Hedges to Alex Jones from, from one end of the political spectrum to the next, anybody looking at any aspect of collapse, and we're particularly talking economic collapse, particularly here in the United States, we have been hearing for, good Lord, going at least going on 14 years is how long I have been hearing it, about this collapse of the U.S. dollar, the petrodollar, about the, uh, the U.S. dollar no longer being the world's reserve currency. Uh, there, good Lord, how many years? Uh, I don't know how many years before 2008. I just came upon the story 14 years ago. And uh, guess what? Uh, the U.S. dollar is still the reserve currency. But uh, amazingly enough, I, uh, I read those comments from Chris Hedges, and I open up oilprice.com, and we have this long article by the, an obvious pseudonym, Tyler Durden, uh, from this outfit called Zero Hedge. Uh, interesting, uh, Zero Hedge is an interesting website, and whoever Tyler Durden really is. Uh, he's kind of like the Sam Carana of the, uh, I guess, the economic collapse. But anyway, Tyler <clears throat> has written this long uh, essay about this subject and gives a lot of background information. And oilprice.com has picked it up today. And so uh, I'm going to put the link on here encourage you to read this, uh, but for those of you who just want Sam Mitchell to sit around and, and talk about this, I, I, I don't know. I used to take this a lot more seriously than I did, but maybe it's time. Is it really going to happen this time? Take it away. Tyler Durden from Zero Hedge and OilPrice.com. Uh, Saudi Arabia 
considers ditching the dollar for Chinese oil sales. So these are the three takeaways that uh, Tyler is getting ready to explain to us. The status of the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency of the world is largely based on its importance in energy and commodity markets. Uh, gee, do you think so? Takeaway number two, according to an exclusive report from the Wall Street Journal, which a lot of what Tyler is getting ready to tell us is, is uh, comes from this story in the Wall Street Journal, which I'm paywalled out of, Saudi Arabia and China are now discussing pricing some, some Saudi oil exports in yuan, you know, kind of the Chinese dollar. <clears throat> Takeaway number three, China is aggressively pushing to dethrone the U.S. dollar as the global reserve currency, and this latest development suggests the petrodollar is now being threatened. I might put the word now finally being threatened. So anyway, those are the three takeaways that Tyler is going to break down for you. Not sure I'm going to read this whole thing, but let's get started. If I don't finish, you can uh, go on the link and pick this up yourself uh, and look at all the various charts and graphs and all of that other stuff going along with it. Okay, Tyler Durden, explain this to us for those trying to figure out what Chris Hedges is so worried about. <clears throat> One of the core staples of the past 40 years and an anchor propping up the dollar's reserve status was a global financial system based on the petrodollar. This was a world, and it is right now still a world, I guess, in which oil producers would sell their products to the United States and the rest of the world for dollars, which they would then recycle the, pro the proceeds of in dollar-denominated assets and while investing in dollar-denominated markets explicitly prop up the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. All of this would support the standing of the U.S. as the world's undisputed financial superpower. <clears throat> and then they, he has this cool little uh, graphic to explain this. Those days are coming to an end. One, one day after we, meaning I guess Zero Heads, reported that the UK is asking Saudis for more, for more oil, the Wall Street Journal is out with a blockbuster report, noting that, quote, Saudi Arabia is in talks with Beijing to price some of its oil sales to China in Yuan, close quote, uh, you know, quoting the Wall Street Journal article, a move that could cripple not only the petrodollar's dominance of the global petroleum market, uh, something which Zoltan Pozar, whoever he is, predicted in his last note, and mark another shift by the world's top crude exporter toward Asia, but also a move aimed squarely at the U.S. financial system, which has taken advantage of the dollar's reserve status by printing as many dollars as needed to fund government spending for the past decade. All right, according to the report, 
uh, from the Wall Street Journal, as I say, which uh, you might be able to get hold of if you're not paywalled out of. <clears throat> According to the report, the talks with China over yuan-priced oil contracts have been off and on for six years. Six years uh, this has been going on. So what is new now? Uh, been going off and on for six years, but have accelerated this year as the Saudis have grown increasingly unhappy with decades-old U.S. security commitments to defend the kingdom. The Saudis are angry over the U.S.'s lack of support for the intervention in the Yemen civil war and over the Biden administration's attempt to strike a deal with Iran over, their, over the nuclear program. Saudi officials have said they were shocked by the precipitous U.S. US withdrawal from Afghanistan last year. China now buys more than 25% of the oil that Saudi Arabia exports, and if priced in yuan, those sales would boost the standing of China's currency and set the Chinese currency on a path to becoming a global petroy, pe oh, a global petro yuan reserve currency. From the petrodollar to the petro yuan. As even the Wall Street Journal admits, a shift to a petro yuan system, quote, would be a profound shift for Saudi Arabia to price even some of its roughly 6.2 million barrels a day of crude exports in anything other than dollars, close quote, as the majority of global sales, around 80%, are done in dollars, and the Saudis have, ra have traded oil exclusively in dollars since 1974 in a deal with the Nixon administration that included security guarantees for Saudi Arabia. It appears that the Saudis no longer care much about U.S. security guarantees and instead are switching their allegiance to China. As a reminder, back in March of 2018, so four years ago this month, China introduced yuan-priced oil contracts as part of its efforts to make its currency tradable across the world, but, so far anyway, they have not made a dent in the dollar's dominance of the oil market, largely because the U.S. dollar remained the currency of choice for oil exporters. But, as Pozar also noted recently, for China, the use of dollars has become a hazard highlighted by U.S. sanctions on Iran over its nuclear program and now on Russia in response to its invasion of Ukraine. And Chris Hedges, what he was saying in that essay yesterday, that he is calling the, Rus the, the U.S. response to the Russian invasion he is claiming, Chris Hedges, that is going to be the trigger that's finally going to set this uh, chain in motion. We will see if uh, Chris Hedges is right in his prediction or not. I am not uh, going to sit here and try to debate Chris Hedges. Alright, back to Tyler Durden. Today's historic transition is not exactly a surprise. China 
has been stepping up its courtship of the Saudi kingdom in recent years, helping Saudi Arabia build its own ballistic miss missiles, consulting on its nuclear program, and investing in Crown Prince Mohammed Abin Salman's pet projects such as Neom, a futuristic new city. Meanwhile, the Saudi relationship with the U.S. has deteriorated under Biden, who said in his 2020 campaign that the kingdom should be a, quote, pariah for the killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in 2018, and I happen to agree with Biden, that's exactly what they should be. Uh, Prince Mohammed, who U.S. intelligence authorities say ordered Mr. Khashoggi's killing, refused to sit in on a call between Biden and the Saudi ruler King Salman last month. It also comes as the U.S. economic relationship with the Saudis is diminishing. The U.S. is now among the top oil producers in the world, a stark reversal from the 1980s when it imported 2 million barrels of Saudi crude every day. But those numbers have fallen to less than 500,000 barrels now. By contrast, China's oil imports have swelled over the last three decades in line with its expanding economy. Saudi Arabia was China's top crude supplier in 2021, selling at 1.76 million barrels per day, followed by Russia at 1.6 million barrels a day, according to data from China's General Administration of Customs. Uh, this is an unidentified Saudi official familiar with the talks. Quote, the dynamics have dramatically changed. The U.S. relationship with the Saudis has changed. China is now the world's biggest crude importer, and they are offering many lucrative incentives to the kingdom. China has been offering everything you could possibly imagine to the kingdom. Close quote. Do you think so? Uh, in retrospect, we now know the reason why MBS was not taking Biden's phone calls. <clears throat> Needless to say, the U.S. is not happy with this historic transformation. A senior U.S. official told the Wall Street Journal that the idea of the Saudis selling oil to China in Yuan was, quote, highly volatile and aggressive and not very likely. Yes, uh, the official said that the Saudis had floated the idea in the past when there was tension between Washington and, and uh, Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> it is, of course, possible that the Saudis could back off switching millions of barrels of oil trades from dollars to yuan every day could rattle the Saudi economy, which has a currency, the real, pegged to the dollar. Prince Mohammed's aides have been warning him of unpredictable economic damage if he moves ahead with the plan hastily. Or perhaps Saudi Arabia is merely preparing for the day when the peg will be broken to sever the last major linkage to the U.S. Uh, doing more sales in yuan would more closely connect Saudi Arabia 
to China's currency, which has not caught on with the international investors because of the tight controls Beijing keeps on it, contracting oil sales in a less stable currency could also undermine the Saudi government's fiscal outlook. Uh, anyway, guys, this, uh, well, I didn't have that much longer to go. Uh, as the Wall Street Journal adds, the impact on the Saudi economy would likely depend on the number of oil sales involved and the price of oil. Some economists said moving away from dollar-denominated oil sales would diversify the kingdom's revenue base and could eventually lead it to re-peg the real to a basket of currencies, uh, said Monica Malik chief economist at Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank, quote, if it is done now at a time of strong oil prices, it would be seen negatively. It would be more seen as deepening ties with China. Still, the Saudis plan to do most oil transaction in dollars, but the transition has begun and the move could tempt other producers to price their Chinese exports in yuan as well. China's other big sources of oil are Russia, Angola, and Iraq. Yes, uh, said Gail Luft, co-director of the Institute of the Analysis of Global Security, Quote, the oil market and by extension the entire global commodities market is the insurance policy of the status of the dollar as reserve currency. If that block is taken out of the wall, the wall will begin to collapse. Close quote. <clears throat> While nothing new to regular zero hedge readers. Uh, they point you to an article uh, from 2017 talking about uh, this very subject. The idea of a new global reserve currency was introduced last week by none other than former New York Fed staff Zoltan Pozar who wrote in his latest must-read note that, quote, when this crisis, meaning when the, U the Ukraine crisis and war is over, the U.S. dollar should be much weaker, and on the flip side, the yuan much stronger, backed by a basket of commodities from the Bretton Woods era backed by gold bullion to Bretton Woods backed by inside money, treasuries, blah, 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 to Bretton Woods 3 backed by outside money, gold bullion, and other commodities, close quote. And wrapping up, Tyler has to say, and so, the pieces of the end game are falling into place. Russia starving the Western world of much needed resources, sending commodity prices ever higher, while its silent partner, China, quietly picks up the monetary pieces and takes advantage of the Western scramble to secure resources at all cost and approach all those other non-Western former petrodollar clients who are also rich in other resources to offer them a new product, the Yuan, which Beijing is now actively and aggressively pushing to dethrone the dollar as a global reserve currency.
So I don't know, guys. You decide. Uh, sounds like pretty much the same tune that I've been hearing being sung for 14 years. But as I've also been saying for 14 years, when Chris Hedges and Alex Jones agree on a subject, it might be time to pay attention. Uh, when everybody from Chris Hedges to Alex Jones uh, is seeing the handwriting on the wall. And then, of course, uh, if and or when this does happen, the question is, what does it mean? And we will wait to find out. It's kind of like this blue ocean event. If and or when the blue ocean event occurs. What does that mean? Does it mean the world's going to starve to death in six weeks? Or uh, does it mean is it just one more tightening of the screw uh, about how doomed this planet is, which is kind of where uh, I am on that whole BOE thing. But uh, anywho, guys, uh, you might want to be thinking of putting your dollars uh, into something other than the bank. Uh, and I'm just going back as much as I can and uh, going back to the good old standby real estate. Imagine that, your old uh, depressed collapsitarian uh, reinvesting his real estate earnings into more real estate. Uh, you, you just can't go wrong with owning land. All of this abstract stuff. You know, I like to be able to put a shovel and plant a tomato plant on my investment. I don't know about you, raise a few chickens on my investment. This is what my mom had taught me, a child of the depression. Anyway, I've got several places to plant tomato plants and raise some chickens now spread out from Florida to New York, baby. And uh, anyway, speaking of real estate, uh, I have to go make some calls. Bye, guys.